All right, our next video dealing with the gas laws is a different relationship than what we talked about yesterday. If you remember from our previous video, we talked about Boyle's Law, which is the relationship between the pressure of the gas and the volume of the gas. And we know that when the volume decreases, when the volume goes down, the pressure must go up. And that was what we called an inverse relationship. Today we're going to talk about something new. We're going to continue to talk about volume, but what we're going to do is we're now we're going to relate the volume of a gas to the temperature of a gas. And how when one changes, how does it affect the other one? And this law is referred to as Charles Law. So when we talk about Charles Law today, we're going to describe how gases respond to changes in volume and temperature. When one changes, how does it affect the other one? We're also going to calculate volume or temperature of a gas as one or the other changes. So I want you to think a little bit about hot air balloons. When a hot air balloon is on the ground, obviously the balloon part is empty, but as you turn that heat on, the uh, air inside of it starts to get heated up. Obviously it creates a flame, and that flame uh, will cr obviously increase the temperature of the gas. And what that does is it takes that gas that's in inside of there as it, uh, heat as it heats up and it allows it to basically expand. And so as that hot air moves around because it's moving faster, the warm air inside the balloon is less dense than the surrounding air. And because it's less dense, it floats in the air, kind of like the reason that ice floats. Ice floats because it's less dense than water. The reason that hot air balloons float, basically, is because they are less dense than the air around them. Because the air inside of the balloon, there's basically less of. And so because there's less air in that same amount of space, it becomes basically lighter than the air, which allows it to go up. So, Charles' law is a relationship between that, between the volume of the gas and the temperature of the gas. And so, just like yesterday, let's talk about the word equation first. It says the volume of, again, a fixed quantity, so it's not changing, of a gas. Now, this time, the pressure is constant. The, so, let's again, let's kind of get rid of this middle part here. We know the amount of the gas isn't going to change. We know the pressure isn't going to change. The volume of a gas increases as the temperature increases. So what we call this is we call this a direct relationship. Boyle's Law was an inverse relationship. This is a direct relationship. When one goes up, the other one also goes up. So in this case, yesterday we wrote that P times V was equal to a constant. Here we can say that the volume is equal to temperature times a constant, or we write it this way, the volume over the temperature is equal to a constant. So if this, if this number doesn't change, if this goes up, this one also has to go up. If this one goes down, this one also has to go down. Now the way that we write that is we're going to write it as, um, excuse me, come back here. So the, vo the value of the constant depends on the pressure of the amount of gas, but again, it won't be used. Don't worry about the constant there. So we can say that the volume is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas when you have a constant pressure. So the way that we mathematically are going to write that is we're going to write V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So again, what does that mean? It means the initial volume divided by the initial temperature is equal to the final volume times the final temperature. Now yesterday when we did our problems with pressure and volume, uh, sometimes it was in atmospheres, the pressure was in atmospheres, sometimes it was in millimeters of mercury. Even with the volume, we didn't look at any examples, but the, some of the volumes could have been in liters, they also could have been in milliliters. It really didn't matter. And here, same thing. With volume, it doesn't really matter. If it's in liters, that's fine. If it's in milliliters, no big deal. What's really important is our temperatures, okay? Your temperatures, when you do the actual calculation, your temperatures must be in Kelvin. If you leave your temperatures in Celsius, your answer absolutely will be wrong. 
So every time you do a problem involving temperature and gases, your temperature must be in Kelvin. So even if they give you the, when they give you the problem and the temperature is in Celsius, and they're asking you for that new temperature, and they also say they want it in Celsius, that's fine. But when you do the actual math part, when you, do, when you use this equation, the temperature must be in Kelvin. So let's see how this would work. Example one, and again, write these down as we're doing them. So we know the equation V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 says the gas volume in an aerosol can, so like hairspray, something like that, is 1.5 liters at 25 degrees Celsius. What would the volume be if the can were heated to 450 degrees Celsius? So right away, before I even start worrying about this, I see temperatures, I get rid of those Celsiuses, and I right away convert those to Kelvin. So 25 plus 273 is 298. Kelvin and then 273 plus 450 is equal to 723 Kelvin. So again before I even do anything at all I'm going to put those temperatures into Kelvin. So my initial volume is 1.5 liters. My initial temperature 298 Kelvin. My final volume is what we don't know. They want to know what would the volume be. So that's our unknown. And then our final temperature is 723 Kelvin. Now to solve this, to get V2 by itself, there's many different ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways I've found is to simply cross multiply. When we cross multiply, we're going to take 1.5 liters and we're going to multiply it by the denominator on the other side, by 723. So we're going to go 1.5 liters times 723 Kelvin. That's what cross multiplication is. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take our V2 and we're going to multiply it by 298 Kelvin. And so now to get V2 by itself, it's a little bit easier. Now we're just going to divide both sides by 298 Kelvin. So to do the math, we're going to take 1.5 multiplied by 723 divided by 298. And with three significant figures, I get V2 equal to 3.64 liters. And that's my final answer for that question um, is 3.64 liters. They might have said, they make it a little bit more tricky, they might have said what would the volume be and they might say in milliliters. So instead of liters they might want it in milliliters. Okay, we need to know that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. So I always remember that milliliters, the milli means in like in Spanish, mil means a thousand. A liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. So if they had wanted this answer in milliliters, we could have just taken 3.64 and multiplied by a thousand. When you multiply something by a thousand, you just move the decimal point three spaces to the right. So that actually would be 3,640 milliliters. So that is something that they might do. Usually with volume though, if it's milliliters, uh, it'll either be liters or it will be milliliters. Uh, kind of like in temperature, it's either going to be Celsius or Kelvin. Those are really your only two choices. Okay, so here's another example. Number two, it says a fixed quantity of gas. So again, not changing our amount of gas. It's at 23 degrees Celsius. Stop right away cross out 23, add 273 equals 296 Kelvin. Exhibits a pressure of 748 Torr. That's interesting. They're putting pressure in there. And occupies a volume of 10.3 liters. 
Calculate the volume of the gas if the temperature is increased to 165. Now, one thing I did not do in here, but I should have, as I should have said, calculate the volume of the gas if the temperature is increased to 165 and the pressure does not change. Because when they gave us the pressure, and maybe the pressure is going to change, so we need to say that. So we need to calculate the volume of the gas. So here's our 165. Let's get rid of that as well. So 273 plus 165 is 438 Kelvin. And so now we're going to use our Charles Law equation, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Our initial volume, it tells us, is 10.3 liters. Our initial temperature is 296 Kelvin. Our final volume is what they're asking us for, calculate the volume. And our final temperature is our 438 Kelvin. So just like our previous problem, we want to find V2. So we're going to cross multiply both ways. And then we're going to divide. So our equation becomes V2. Let's see if you can get this as well. 10.3 liters times 438 Kelvin divided by 296 Kelvin. So now we go to our calculator, 10.3 times 438 divided by 296, 15.2 liters is our final answer. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is you know, if we had, let's say, let's say we did leave the, the temperatures in Celsius. So it would have been 10.3 times 165 divided by 23 equals 73.9. What a big difference 15.2 is from 73.9. You're talking a huge discrepancy in the answer. So your temperatures absolutely must be in Kelvin to get the correct answer. All right, let's look at one more problem here. A sample of gas occupies a volume of 1,248 cubic feet. It's not something we've seen before, but that's okay. We can still solve the problem. At 0.988 atmospheres, so there's a pressure because we see atmospheres, and a temperature of 28, go away, 28. 28 plus 273 equals 301 Kelvin. Do that every time. Okay, part A says calculate the pressure of the gas if its volume is decreased to 978 cubic feet while its temperature is held constant. So if the temperature isn't changing, even though today we've only been talking about Charles' Law, if the temperature doesn't change, you're not going to use Charles' Law. Well, the only other law we know is the Boyle's Law, and so that one tells us that P1V1 equals P2V2. So our initial pressure is 0.988 atmospheres. Our initial volume is, again, something we're not really familiar with, but 1,248 cubic feet. We're just going to go with it, and hopefully it works. Our final pressure is unknown. Calculate the pressure. But our final volume, they tell us, is 978 cubic feet. So now we need to get P2 by itself. So we're going to divide by both sides by 978. So we're going to go 0.988 times 1,248 divided by 978 cubic feet equals pressure equal to 1.26. Now our cubic feet canceled and what we have left is atmospheres. So ATM is our final answer. 
So our final pressure is 1.26 atmospheres. Okay, so this is a, a problem that now you're going to have to start thinking, which equation do I use? Do I use Boyle's Law or do I use Charles' Law? Well, if the temperature is held constant, that's a good indicator that you're going to be using Boyle's Law. Okay, let's look at letter B. So this one, our answer was 1.26 atmospheres. Letter B says, at what temperature in degrees Celsius is the volume of the gas 1,435 cubic feet if the pressure is kept constant? So now our pressure isn't changing, but our temperature clearly is. So now we know we're going to be using Charles' Law. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now let's see our initial volume back up here is 1248 cubic feet. Our initial temperature, oops, which I erased, was our 301 Kelvin. Our final temperature, we don't know, that's what they're asking us for, at what temperature. And our final volume is 1435 cubic feet. So again, with Charles' Law, we're going to cross-multiply, and then we're going to divide. So I'm going to cross-multiply 301 times 1,435. And then I'm going to cross-multiply T2 times 1248. And then to get T2 by itself, I'm going to divide by 1,248. So my final answer, my final temperature, T2, is equal to 346 Kelvin. And let's just check, make sure we did it right. At what temperature in degrees Celsius is the volume of the gas? Okay, so our temperature is in Kelvin. Now notice again, they gave us the number in Celsius. They're asking us for Celsius. When I did the problem, I still used Kelvin. So now just to get, my, to get my final answer, I'm going to take 346, I'm going to subtract 273, and I get 73 degrees Celsius. And that's my final answer. I, that's everything that I need to do for that problem. Okay, let's look at our last page here, looking at our objectives. What happens to a gas when pressure is held constant? and the temperature increases. If the temperature increases and the pressure has to remain constant, the volume must go up. If the volume decreases, the temperature must go down. And if the temperature decreases, the volume will also go down. A good example of this one right here is what happens when you put a balloon in a freezer. Okay, obviously the temperature of the gas inside the balloon goes down. What does your balloon do? your balloon obviously gets smaller. Okay, it's getting smaller because as the temperature goes down, so does the volume. So again, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. You should be able to use this equation to solve for any of the variables. So if I say, how do you get the initial temperature? You should be able to cross multiply and divide. So it would be V1 times T2 divided by V2 once you do your cross multiplication and your division. You need, be, need to be able to do that for all four of those variables. And just remember one last time, remember those temperatures when you do the actual calculation have to be in Kelvin.